welcome to a talk IT tutorial. So this is lab six, the very final lab in the Python game. So lab six, writing the AI. Let's get straight to it. I'm not going to go over part one, two or three here because that's sort of something that you can just read up on. So um, what can I say? This isn't necessarily um, like a mandatory type of thing this is really uh, sort of an optional lab if you want to test yourself if you want to get a bit more understanding it's going to be a bit more mathematical um, so feel don't feel bad if you don't fully understand everything that's going on there's going to be a bit more complex code as well um, so it's going to be uh, I feel good if you want to challenge yourself carry on with this with this lab so the the after reading the, the thing above, the first thing that we want to do is create a uh, possible um, list of peg values effectively. So, da -da -da. so this is uh, obviously in the L, so in number two we have a uh, possible peg values. So this is going to be the, um, the joined list of uh, red blue green y where they'd normally be split by commas but now they're just going to be a string list the reason for this is it's just going to be easier to use uh same with our secret peg list so let's just make things a little bit easier for ourselves so first thing we do is else before we enter the while we're going to create something called possible peg values and secret which is just the the joined up um, joined up string of all of these from the list then as I just talked about we're going to want to create a, a list effectively a collection of all possible values and then a set uh, of all possible values uh, that you'll see how these are used a little bit later in the game um, for this AI piece uh, but at the moment you don't need to worry about them too much i'm going to go in to explain the code a little bit more now so mastermind ai so this is obviously using the ai class that we made calculate possible values so i'm going to go into ai here so i'm just going to drag that across oh it's already there so at the moment it's empty uh we're going to import something from itr e it, I don't know how to really pronounce this, but iter tool, iter tools, and anyway, effectively iteration tools. Um, import product. Uh, this will allow us to really easily create uh, every possible combination effectively. And I'll explain how this works once I just copy and paste it in here. So, def calculate possible values. Uh, what does this do? So we send in the possible value strings. This could be red, blue, green, yellow. And we also have the repeat time. Um, and what it's going to do is return the list uh, with the string joined up from of P's for P in product of possible value string and the repeat number. So if the possible value string is red, blue, green, and yellow, and the repeat is four, what you'd have is sort of uh, all the combinations going from red, 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 red to red, 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 blue, red, red. Um, blue red and repeating all the way until you've got every possible combination of that so the repeat time is effectively how many num uh, how many characters you have so if that's five then it'll go and add another R onto the end so there'll be five things there so now we'll create a list of all, all the possible results so this is effectively your black and white values so uh, this is uh, going to be encoded slightly differently from how we did it last time so this can be a tuple where you have a uh, the black number first then the white uh, number second so the the list of combinations could obviously depending on the number of pegs if you had four pegs it'd be uh, going from zero one to four zero effectively uh, all of this is just used inside the game um, and you'll see it's useful to create these now before we start uh, going on with anything else. So I'm going to pull that into the AI, like here. Let's go back to that, indent that. 
Okay, so it's a big old line there. Okay, so what does it do? Return right and wrong for right in range uh, peg list size plus one. So remember range, so it'll go from zero to this this size, but it won't actually include it. Um, for wrong in range of the size minus right. So this would go effectively, uh, if you think of it, uh, if the first one is zero, it'll go zero, four, um, and then obviously as right gets bigger, uh, wrong gets smaller. Um, but what we won't ever have is where <coughs> we have the peg list size minus one and wrong equal to one. So that's the case where you've got, if we had four pegs, we've got three blacks and one white because that doesn't make sense because it can never happen. So we've got that now. And what we're going to do is actually get the uh, user guess. So this is obviously the, the computer getting the guess here. So the, the real AI starts to kick in now. So save that, go to main. So get the computer guess. So what are we sending in? So use guest equals the attempt. So the, we're sending in the possible values. So that's that set, uh, the list of colors, the possible values. So this is again that, that string we created earlier. The result values, all possible values. Do you see why that's useful to send in both possible values and all possible values? Um, and then we also send in the guess number. Um, because depending on the guess, we're going to do something a little bit differently. So let's uh, add the attempt code into AI now. So there we go, it's format indent. So attempt, so if first equals false. So on the uh, time when guess is actually equal to zero, this is gonna be true for one, one time only. If it is true, uh, the first guess, what we wanna do is depending on the peg size, so if let's say it's six, we wanna choose red, red, red. So three reds and then three blues. Um, again, look at the Wikipedia page, It there's some definitely some quite strong mathematics behind it but apparently that is the best chance of uh, solving this first time like in um in the uh, five tries effectively um if the length of s is equal to one so let's have a look at that if the length of s is equal to one so this is the possible values that there could be then we want to pop it because that should be our uh, that should be what we want to use as our guess um, because if we've only got one possible value that should be it else what we want to do is return so this is um, if you've ever heard of it uh, min max and this is doing effectively the uh, the max value made uh, by scoring up all of the the uh, at the user guesses uh, with the results. Uh, I'm, it's going to be quite hard to explain this, but effectively what you do is you score um, each and every value um, against the uh, results and you choose the highest one in that. So that, yeah, I mean, it's saying that definitely read up on it's very confusing. Um, I think in the Wikipedia page there's actually something that explains this quite well. Um, I've said it may be a bit confusing. Spend 10 minutes on it to try and understand it. It's quite hard to articulate, um, which is why I don't think I can go into it very, very easily. Uh, so now we have the, the user guess. We can incre increment the guess number. So one thing that we're going to do differently with the computers, we're actually going to print their guess. Uh, so let's grab that. Bring this up that back a little bit. So we want to print the guess, increment the guess number. Uh, then we want to do get the the black and white values. So we're going to score it. We're going to do this in a bit more of a not a, a complex way, but a bit bit nicer way to doing it 
than what we did last time. So again, just pull those, make sure the indentations are correct. So mass mine, we're going to score it. So the secret value, the user guess, and the possible peg values. So that's what we're going to be sending in. Um, uh, appending the user guess and then appending the, the black and whites we get back so that we can display it in the, the UI how we normally would in the, uh, the one player scenario versus the computer. So let's write the uh, score code now. As you can see straight away, it looks much nicer. So let's get that. Okay, so score takes in the secret, the other, and the, the string peg list we've got there. How does this work? So what we're actually going to do, so first is going to be the length uh, of the, is the length of the the list where um, SPEG for SPEG OPEG in the zip so this is a, a Python function uh, what we do is put in secret and we put in other uh, it, what effectively what it does is just create a tuppled list of these um, and if SPEG equals OPEG then uh, that's what we're going to be doing the length of uh, and then obviously it's the length of that so uh, if we've got of a tuple of red and red then that gets put into this list and we we count that and that's our black values uh, and then we return that value and then for the second value we do uh, the sum of the the minimum of the secret <laughs> the secret dot count so this is the secret thing other dot count j um, for j in string peg list so what that's going to do is go through that that peg list that we've got so um, red blue green yellow it's going to go through that and where it's going to count all of the numbers that it it matches with and then it's going to remove those map the sum of that from the the black numbers to give you your white numbers so effectively uh, the bottom one will match everything um, on the basis of the the color um, and then remove it from black um, which gives you your white number so that's the the scoring part of it let's see uh, what our, our last well I, I say last it's one of our last things to do is get the answer uh, which just is master service layer dot have one um, I don't need to explain that because we've we've already done it before see if they've won so that, that's the same exact same as it was in the uh, normal players update possibilities so this is where things get again a little bit more mathematical so now we know that they haven't won here uh, we want to update the possibilities um, in the knowledge that obviously we don't have the answer so we want to try and get the best value back for that so going to AI again here, putting that in. So this update possibilities uh, does a difference update. So what this is is taking in that uh, the the set of possible values that we've got. We're performing a difference update on it, and again uh, we're going to score them. We're going to score each and every possible combination that we've got in there. Um, and we, we what we want to do is if that score doesn't match um, what we've received for the black and whites of our, our previous guess, um, then obviously it can't be a possible value because only those values would have given us that that um, black and white value that we received. And so we can discard the rest and only keep those. And so what you see is this, this possible values at the start is very large and then it gets dramatically smaller and then even more so dramatically smaller and then as you start to near the end it, it actually is quite small um, and so the worst case scenario is you just have to pick a random value out of that which uh, in our code it just does s.pop so it just takes um, or actually sorry it will only do that if that is the value um, otherwise it's gonna try and work out which one is likely to be the best um, and use that
So we've done that. And then we need to run it. So again, I'm just going to open it up. I need to save everything here. Save the AI. Uh, and we're going to run it. Uh, what I found is a good idea to do is just choose four colors, four colors, four pegs, uh, if you want something to be reasonably quick. Uh, as you increase the uh, pegs, oh, uh, mass mind AI is not defined. Okay, so straight away, I've uh, forgot to import it there. So I forgot this little step here. So from AI, okay, we'll run that. Four, four, and we'll just say two. Mastermind service. Okay, so apparently I've got a spelling mistake somewhere. Okay, so let's look at that. It's on the user guess, uh, which is up here. Matt Lay Mastermind Service Layer. Is that right? Mastermind Service Layer. Yep. Okay, cool. So we're going to save that and we'll run that again. weird I've just copied and pasted something clearly so this is here it working so the computer did that on its fourth try there as you can see it's very smart to be honest it didn't wasn't a particularly hard one uh, yellow red blue blue and obviously as you can see uh, with the the starting combination where we use red red blue blue it would have got that very quickly um, anyway thank you very much for listening I um, hope you've enjoyed um, but there's going to be many more game tutorials coming very soon. Uh, I hope you go into them. Thank you very much.